What's up, everybody? I'm here today with Rain or Shine's Maverick Aha Misi. Um, fun fact, we were actually uh, high school teammates. We both went to Golden Valley High School. Now we're both out here uh, playing pro basketball in Manila, Philippines. Um, you've been out here how many years now? Four, nice. Four long, gross years. <laughs> and the conferences are long out here, aren't they? Yeah, bro. Like, I think there are three months each conference, but there's three conferences. So a whole season is probably 10 months. Jeez, jeez, jeez. So do you fly home more or do your parents come out here? I think I fly home more because my parents aren't really working. Oh, no, okay, cool. But they've got to come out here, right? Like they saw the draft? Oh yeah, definitely. And then my brother's cool that my brother's out here playing college. So, yeah. you know, they get to come out here a couple of times, watch him play. That's awesome, that's awesome. Don't worry, I got plenty of questions, so we're gonna dive into that. Um, but let's just start off with some rapid fire questions. Um, okay, question one, English or Tagalog? I like Tagalog better than English, because I mean, the States. So this, you gotta answer all the questions in Tagalog. What? No, no, no. <laughs> But people don't know what I'm saying in America, so yeah, sometimes. Exactly. Okay, okay. Uh, best food to try in the Philippines? Best food, I like adobo. It's, I mean, it's chicken, you know, chicken and double. Yeah. Something easy. You, you know what's crazy is, so my mom is uh, the Filipino side. Uh, my dad is completely white, but he makes the most phenomenal adobo. Uh, the most phenomenal adobo. He, he learned from your mom, though? He learned from my grandma. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, Pre-game music. Oh, man, that's tough. I'm on, I'm on Travis Scott right now. Okay. Astral World. Okay, Sickle, turning up, huh? Let's go. Uh, would you rather dunk on somebody or hit an ankle-breaking three? Well, I can't dunk, Taylor. Come on now. Come on, we've seen the off-the-backboard. Uh, you know, you know that's in warm-ups, <laughs> but dunking on somebody? No, so I'm gonna hit the ankle-breaking three. Okay, okay. What is the most points you've ever scored in a game? Any game? Any game. Mm -hmm. 41. High school. It was high school? Yeah. Oh, man, I thought... But for sure you break that by now. Adult league or something. Yeah. No, I think the highest pro is 31. Okay. Yeah. Um, UAP or NCA since it's the playoffs? UF. Definitely UF. UF, okay. Favorite vacation spot? Here or anywhere in the world? Just anywhere. In the off season. Shoot. I mean, California, of course. I mean, that's it's not a vacation. Oh, that's not it. Okay, Minnesota. Okay. Nice, right, nice, nice. nice. Uh, Gucci or Louis Vuitton? Oh, Louis. I'll <laughs> just bleep that out. Uh, Nike or Adidas? Come on, bruh. I, I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's sponsored. You know. uh, Adidas, throw me some shoes too. Yeah, I know this guy. Yeah. Uh, here. Kobe or MJ? Oh man, you got me on that one. MJ's the greatest of all time. I grew up a Laker, so I'm going Kobe. Okay, now leads to my next question Kobe or LeBron? Kobe. Good answer. Never LeBron. Good answer. We might have to end this early if uh, you said LeBron. No, but never. Uh, in the gym, I had no right. <laughs> in the gym, would you rather lift legs or be working abs? Abs. Okay. Uh, would you rather ride in a jeepney or the MRT? Ooh, that's tough. I don't know. I think MRT's too, like, there's too many people in there, bro. I'd rather just squeeze into a jeep. Jeepney is hot, though. It is hot. MRT is low air conditioned, so even, get, though, even though you're a sardine. But I think I'm more likely to get pickpocketed in, 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 uh, in MRTs, bro. Because they're so close, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, somebody could just snatch me and dip. Yeah. That's why I used to put my hands in my pockets. Yeah. My first year out here, I had to ride the MRT a lot, so. Oh, yeah. You know, your first year is the roughest, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, last few questions. What is Maverick's next crazy haircut? We've seen the red hair, oh, yep. we've seen the mohawk, That's the crazy. tips, what else? What you got next? I'm going gray hair, bro. Gray <laughs> Yeah, on okay. my whole top, my head's gonna be gray okay. soon. Wow. Before I go home, I'll let y'all go. Okay, soon. okay. Um, mm -hmm. Lastly, what is the first place you're gonna eat when you come back to Cali? Oh, In-N-Out, for sure. In-N-Out or Panda Express, I miss that shit. Panda, okay, okay, yeah. nice. 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 Yeah, In-N-Out you got to. Mm-hmm, protein burger. Oh man, yeah, I miss, I miss Chick-fil-A. That's, yeah, oh, that's fire. 
but so people keep tricking me because I keep making these posts where they say Chick Fil A is now open on Sundays. Oh yeah, yeah. I almost had to move back home when I heard that. You you tried raising canes? Yeah, yeah. They got that, it. They're popping up all over SoCal now. So what? That or Chick Fil A? I had to go Chick Fil A. Man, I'm going raising canes. Yeah, that, it's like garlic toast. Yeah, I think it's a Midwest. Okay, now more serious questions. Okay, um, who do you have winning the PBA championship this conference? This conference? Dang, I think I'm gonna go with Paul Lee, bro. He's well, he's hooping right now. But know your hot shots, mm -hmm. and I think they're up 2-0 on Ginevra. So I think just the way they're playing, bro. I don't think it's gonna be hard to stop them. Their offensive game is crazy. Yeah, they look. <laughs> his dog yeah. but yeah they look tough I mean they have a lot of bets and then they're import like I saw one game their import is just oh just yeah killing right now yeah Romeo Travis is Man. going to this. he might not be happy about your LeBron answer though this season. No, that's okay bro I'm sorry I'm not I'm not LeBron fan bro <laughs> um who is the toughest local you face and then who is the toughest import toughest local um I mean, it depends. Like, if you say, like, who I have to guard, that's the toughest lo local. Mm -hmm. Is he really a local if he's a Philly? We count as locals, right? Yeah. All right, so Stanley. Bro. Stanley, yeah, that's he's a tough one. Yeah, he's I tough. like his game. He's tough, bro. He's, he's just the combination of quickness and, like, speed and mm -hmm. his agility for able to move from one spot to the next, it's, it's tough to go, bro. Shoot, bro, I, honestly, I don't know. It might be Romeo Travis right now, I'm saying. Yeah. Right now, he's, he's just, he's open, bro. He's a beast, like, in terms of rebounding and stuff and scoring at the same time. Yeah, he has that tough mid-range shot. Yeah, bro, he's killing. It's hard to guard him right now. Um, so now, you had a chance to represent Gillis uh, this past August for the Asian Games. Mm -hmm. Now, just walk me through, kind of, you know, give our viewers, like, a description of just the emotions of having Philippines on your chest, representing a country, mm -hmm. um, and then what it was like playing on that world stage. Um, definitely a blessing. I mean, you know, I never thought, I've always wanted to play for the national team, but, you know, I didn't think it was possible because, you know, the rule is, you know, you have to have your passport by um, you're 16, and I got mine when I was like 20, 21 or something, but, so for me to be able to represent the country, <laughs> you know, it was a big deal for me and my family. Definitely. You know, um, going out there in the national stage, playing against other teams, China, it's, it's a different feeling. You know what I mean? Knowing that you're representing a, a nation, you know what I mean? Against like China, playing a basketball crazed country, yeah, you know what definitely. I mean? Um, it's definitely different, especially you're playing against like other NBA players or playing with NBA players, you know. Because mm -hmm. you, you got to play with Jordan, right? Yeah, so definitely um, a different experience rather than just playing for um, your club team or, you know, your family. It's like you're playing for, you know, everybody that, you know, has um, looked up to you or like people that have helped you along the way, you know, to get where you are. Yeah, that's awesome. Especially with the, the Gillis team you were on, there's, I mean, so many veterans, so many guys who've oh, been yeah, through that sure. for years, and, you know, you probably learned so much from them. Um, now, you've had a very successful career throughout. Uh, you played four years on varsity uh, at Golden Valley. Um, so you went in as a freshman, you were starting on varsity. You know, the first two years were a little rocky. And you helped bring Golden Valley its first league title. Mm -hmm ever like ever to the school for any sport you were you're the school's all-time leading scorer uh you're lucky i transferred in late <laughs> but now from your first two years to your last two years what was the what was the difference uh because even when i went there I, I felt like when i went there my sophomore year it was completely different than my senior year you know yeah. there's like a big culture shift uh what do you credit that to um, I don't know. I think honestly, it was just, you know, it personally for me, it was my maturity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, me coming in as a freshman, I didn't realize like what was at stake, you know, like me coming in and just playing basketball, being on varsity. I, I thought that was just the cool thing to do already, you know yeah. what I mean? To be on varsity as a freshman. But I, ne I never knew what like it could lead to yet at that point. You know, I was still like just hooping for fun, you know what I mean? I didn't. 
I wasn't at that mindset like, oh, I'm gonna take this sport and like, use it to get a college degree, you know what I mean? So I think my junior, senior year, like pers for personal preference, like I think my maturity is what helped shift it, my mentality. But in terms of the team, like we just got better pieces, man. Like, and then there's people that we added to the team that wanted to win, you know what I mean? We added you, like Trevor, we had Stevie, you know, came from a different school. We added different pieces that and people that wanted to win, you know what I mean? They weren't yeah. just there just to like stay out of trouble, you know what I mean? That's what we had the first couple of years. And you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just like we didn't have, my first couple of years, we didn't have the same goal, you know what I mean? Not everybody had the same goal. So I think that's what, that, that's what definitely changed is from zero and 10 in league, you know what I mean? We went to 10 and 0. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely special to be a part of. I mean, for me, like, Obviously, I was ineligible my junior year because of my transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, even being there, practicing with you guys every day, uh, being in the crowd, just being a part of that like atmosphere, and then you know, creating something like that. And then once you guys left, you know, withstanding that, and then the next oh, year yeah, we went on to win. Uh, that was pretty special. So yeah. hopefully, GV can get back to the top soon. Um, yeah. So yeah, out there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, they have Coach Key, so yeah. Hopefully, he's he's Doing gonna thing. yeah he's gonna turn things around. Uh, now you went on to play at the University of Minnesota, uh, high major D one, where you won the NIT championship again, another another championship. Uh, then you come out to the Philippines and have to play the PBA D League just to be eligible for the PBA draft. Yeah. Uh, what were some adjustments you had to make your first year? Because obviously, everybody's first year overseas is usually the toughest. Yeah. So for you, what were some adjustments you had to make? Um, just being, the biggest one was being away from home. You know, that's, I think, that's most of the biggest adjustments for people going overseas who's really attached to their family. You know what I mean? Um, just living on your own and, you know, if you don't know the language in that country, then it's real tough, especially, but thank God I knew the language already. Now, when you, when you say, <laughs> like, moving away, mm -hmm. You went from California to Minnesota, right? So, what was the difference from that to moving to the Philippines? Um, I think me being, you know, moving from California to Minnesota. I think the difference was that, you know, I, I was still, I still felt close to home. Like, you know, I can take a plane, a quick plane ride, and I'll be back home in three hours. You know, I mean, to see my family, and it was more likely for my parents to come see me because it's just a short ride. You know what I mean? And they had no problems like watching me on TV and stuff like that. But when you go away to another country, you just feel so distant from them. Yeah, you know definitely. what I mean? And, and then the time difference. Time difference and things like that. I'm playing at 7 p.m. You know, in California it's 4 a.m. So obviously they're not gonna be up. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's definitely a tough thing. And it, in terms of workouts and stuff, like that's definitely different. Also, the humidity here is crazy compared to like from California, which is like hot. You know, and then you go to Minnesota, which is cold, and yeah. then you come over here and the humidity is crazy. Yeah. It's different. You go from from that, um, you win a PBA D-League championship, again, another championship. Mm -hmm. uh, then your rookie year, okay, you're drafted third overall. Mm -hmm. um, what were your thoughts coming in as a rookie? Um, honestly, I, I was shocked, man. Like, I, I didn't think... Like, I was going to be pick number three, you know, Renishan took a chance on me, and, uh, you know, my thoughts coming in was, I just wanted to help the team any way I could, you know, there's a lot of vets on the team at the time, we had Paul, mm -hmm. Gabe, Chris Chu, Jeff Chan, like, you know, we, we were stacked, you know, yeah. from top to bottom, so, you know, I, I lucked out that Paul got injured at the time, and they needed somebody to step up, and I was able to show, you know, what I can do. Um, but at that time, man, I was just trying to help the team any way we could, and you know, it just had, so happened that we were able to win the championship. I mean, that was a, for me, for me, that that was like really special to see, you know, from you to go to Minnesota to the D League, and then through all that success, then the next year, your boom. rookie year, boom, you're just right into it, and you have like all these PBA legends on your team, oh, yeah, exactly. just right there in the mix. No, for sure, it was a blessing, bro. Right? Is uh, I think that that honestly is what molded me to like still be able to be in the league right now and like you know be relevant. It's because of those guys I was with, you know, my rookie year. 
they helped me be, you know, relevant until now, like knowing what I can do on the court. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that mentorship alone yeah. is, I mean, that's priceless. Um, so then you go on to your rookie season, uh, winning a PBA championship, your all rookie team, um, obstacle course champion. Um, at this point, with all the success, you know, especially as basketball players mm -hmm. in the social media era, yeah. um, it's very easy to get content, let things get to your head. Um, what pushed you to continue working? Um, I think that's just in my genes, honestly. I've never like been complacent with, with things like, you know, what's a one PBA title, you know what I mean? Somebody else has two, yeah. you know what I mean? What's a obstacle course challenge? Somebody made the all-star team, you know? I, there, there's always things you can work on to get better. Like June Mars, five-time MVP, you know what yeah. I mean? I don't even have one yet, like yeah. what am I, you know what I mean? So I think it's just, you know, not staying complacent, not being satisfied and just always striving to be better than what you just accomplished. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And I'm all about like that relentless mentality. Oh, yeah. I mean, I even tell people, people laugh at me because when I was in Thailand and I broke the point record, mm -hmm. I had 57 and after the game, my teammates are like popping champagne in the locker room and going crazy and I'm over there steaming. Yeah. And the other American on the team, D'Angelo comes up and he's like, bro, you just had 50? You broke your own record, you have 57, like we're playing ex-NBA guys. Mm. And I was like, bro, that's not good enough. I should have had 16. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Away, yeah. Bro. When you're when you're like so driven towards something, you know, it's it's hard to be satisfied. Oh yeah, for sure. You know? And then when you get there, I, I think that's what makes great players so great is they just check it off and they're on to the next. Yeah, when, you know? when you get complacent, bro, and you, you're satisfied of something, like that's where the drive stops, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's where that fall comes in. Yeah. Um, so now it's the off season. Uh, you guys just ended playoffs. Um, what are you going to be focusing on this off season? I'm um, just getting stronger, working on my, you know, my bounce and speed, agility. Um, you know, also as a PG, working on pick and rolls. You know, it's really important for guards who want to stay, you know, relevant in the league. You know, especially learning from players like Chris Chu, you know, he's not the fastest, not the strongest, not the quickest, but, you know, he's one so of, smart, man. Yeah, bro, he's one of the best guards in the league. Uh, IQ is definitely important, so I got to keep him steady in every day on the game. Uh, now, as we talked about earlier, your seasons are, you know, usually 10 to 11 months, uh, depending on how far you guys go in playoffs. Yep. So besides basketball, um, what, like, what do you do outside of basketball? Because if if you're this driven on something and you, everything is just all basketball, it's very easy to get burnt out. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, you vlogging right now? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's something that I like to do on my spare time. Also, I like, like video games too. But no, I when I was out here, I told myself I have to find stuff that you know are gonna keep me engaged. You know what I mean? Not 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 just basketball because you know basketball out here is year round. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? There's basketball in different leagues, you're on TV, you know what I mean? You're training all the time, you're lifting weights, it's always basketball. So I try to find some other stuff that, you know, are gonna keep me engaged, like vlogging maybe, like uh, staying active wise, like doing something else. I like rock climbing. Um, you know, just try that, man. I, I, gotta, I gotta try it, bro. It's dope. But yeah, I asked that because I know so many uh, other professional basketball players that, you know, we put everything into basketball and ball is life and, um, you know, we're all just knock on wood one injury away from it right. being over. Yeah, and sure. I, I notice a lot of my friends and players I'm connected with, once their career is over, they don't really know who they are. They have like a... a no sen identity. They have no identity, exactly. Because they don't know what else they like because everything yeah. is just basketball, basketball. So that's what I tend to ask people is like, what do you do outside of it? You know, oh yeah, for sure. Especially for like... Um, a lot of the kids I train, I try to tell them like, you gotta find something you like outside of it to keep you a little distracted. So when you come back, you have that hunger. Yes, you know, that most definitely. Right now is UAP playoffs. You have um, obviously your brother Jarek is one of the top college players. Um, you know, one of the he's known as one of the top scorers. Not a surprise. Uh, how many is he? Um, will you be tweeting this playoff? I mean, if, if something goes down, I, I'm not afraid to tweet again, y'all. <laughs> so, I mean, but like, no, I love watching UF, you know what I mean? It's just like, there's just some controversial stuff that be happening during definitely. the games, but I can't stop my Twitter fingers. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it's really physical out here. They 
Yeah. It's got to be hard for the refs, you know, but I mean, oh, some, of those, some of those calls last year were a little, yeah. But um, all jokes aside, with all the current success, uh, you know, what's it like having him out here? And, you know, seeing him grow into a man and a professional, you know, because your parents aren't here and it's just kind of yeah. you and him out here. Oh, it's, it's definitely cool, man, to see him grow. And, uh, you know, when he first came out here, there's no, he was trying out for teams like Ateneo, Adamson, I mean, Adamson, um, LaSalle and stuff, and they all turned him down. You know what I mean? And so for him to, you know, get the gratification of the success now, it's crazy to see where he came from in terms of, I mean, before I remember when he first came out here, he's going through tryouts and stuff. I'm telling him to go hard. You know what I mean? Like, because you, the way his mentality was before is just like, you know, I'm, I'm going to get, you know, the scholarship. Yeah. That type of stuff. Yeah. That, that's his mentality. But now it's, I don't need to, you know, push him anymore. He's on his own. Like, he, he has that own self-motivation to, you know, want to be better. And, like, and he's able to right now. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome to see, especially since, you know, we're the same age. Our brothers are the same age. Yeah. Obviously, my brother was playing basketball all the way up also. Oh, yeah. so, so, I mean, that I mean that is like really awesome to see. Um, but now my last question, if Maverick Ahamisi was stop playing basketball today, what would he be doing? Oh, that's a great question. No, but if you would have asked me that a year ago, I probably wouldn't know. But now I'm actually looking to be a hospital administrator. Really? Yes. Wow. How did that come to play? Well, my dad is actually, you know, my dad's in the business. So, you know, he's been teaching me about certain things. And, uh, you know, my girlfriend's part of the medical field also. So just knowing that, like, I've been reading about it a lot. And it's something that, you know, is also active work, like with all the travel and stuff. So I think it wouldn't be as different for me, you know, traveling a lot, playing basketball. It's not too far of being different you know what i mean and and it's still a competitive type environment so i think that's something i would like that's awesome man that, that is a great answer i was really not <laughs> expecting that yeah because because even when we were out here uh when i first played out here three years ago i remember asking you that same question yeah like you know what's your like and long term i did not know and you're like man i don't know i can't no, but that's this. every basketball player yeah. is like or any athlete right? yeah. that's any athlete's like problem you know what i mean like after your sport, you basically start from zero. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you go back to wherever you want to live or something. And that's why my suggestion to players or athletes playing overseas or something, you got to find something that you enjoy or, you know, always look towards the future because you don't know when it's going to be over. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Exactly. And that's exactly what I preach is, especially right now, I'm trying to use my platform you know, to help others and to also build my business. Oh, yeah. So I can, once I'm done, I don't have to start at zero. Yeah. You know, I have the networks. I've been helping kids get to college, so now I'm connected with college. Yeah, so sure. that's huge. But uh, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.